Oh man, brother, we watched episode 8 of House of the Dragon, so you know what time it is. Hit that intro. Woo! 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright everybody, if it's your first time joining us, welcome! We're two dads who love all things fandom, from Star Wars to Star Trek, Marvel to DC, and Middle Earth on down to Westeros. We love it all and we want to bring all of our insights and love of all things nerdy to you, our viewers. So if that's your milk of the puppy, then we're here for you. And you should definitely subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all of our amazing reviews and insights that we bring to all of our favorite fandoms. The, so thanks for tuning in, guys. My name is Chris of the House Matthews, and I'm joined, as always, by, once again, my driving buddy, Mr. Matt of the House Parhamium. How are we doing today, brother? Not too bad at all. This is a very, very piece of uh, art, I will say. I, I was impressed with this episode, anxious to talk to you about it. Yes. Oh, man. I... Spoiler alert, I agree. So we watch Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, Episode 8, titled The Lord of the Tides. On Rotten Tomatoes, I always look up the Rotten Tomatoes score. So you guys know the our, our repeat subscriber viewers here, you know. I look up the Rotten Tomatoes score. It was 94% this time around. So overall, pretty decent, certified fresh. Let's get into this. I gotta say, Matt... I was so impressed with this, and I gotta say, the rewatchability of this episode is through oh. the roof. I've watched this episode three times already, so I ha I love all of the performances, everybody coming together. Oh my gosh, Patty Constantine is epic in this. I as him as King Viserys in this episode. Uh, it's he's got to get all the awards in the world for his yeah. performance as King Viserys in this show. And it was a great send-off for them. I think that, as we see at the end of the episode, he does pass away. And just yeah. to see this character degrade through this this leprosy that he has throughout this show and to see how far he's come has been really interesting to see. And hats off to uh, the, the costume and the makeup and the people that work on the CGI for this I was character. Gonna, yeah, I think it we just, had a little was, bit of just there too. Yeah. Yeah, the effects for King Viserys were amazing and it kind of reminded me of the Dark Knight as well when when they yeah. had Two-Face and his his design aspect as well as in The Kingdom of Heaven if you ever saw that uh the the King of Jerusalem had leprosy too and they have a full face plate on his on his um on his face obviously yeah. face plate. I also uh, was uh, was wondering if we got a little bit of the Captain America First Avenger stuff with uh, his face put on somebody else's body, you know, when we were seeing the shots of him. I thought about that, too. Yeah, it kind of did it, look it, like it, that it, to me. Yeah. Very it, emaciated. So, emaciated. Very, very emaciated. So, yeah, I, I just had all around. They, whatever they, it was, it worked. It was totally believable in here. Absolutely. It felt bad for the guy looking at him, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. How much this character has been through. And I think George R. R. Martin mentioned this to Patty Constantine uh, during this season as well. He's like, you have made this character better than what I wrote in the books. That is high praise from George R. R. Martin when it yeah. comes to this character. So, uh, like, hats off to Patty Constantine for this this amazing performance of this character. He definitely deserves all the awards and kudos. And round of applause. You are a stellar actor. Off you the wheel applause. <laughs> stole, yeah, stole the scene. You stole the whole show. And I, I, like, House of the Dragon, if you don't like it for anything else, um, the one thing that you can take out of this is that Patty Constantine is an amazing actor and we got to see some of the best performances from him and i look forward to seeing more from this actor in the future because of this show so 
Yeah. Good job, sir. You did an amazing job. Uh, everybody's bringing their A game to Emma Darcy. Uh, Rhaenyra is playing an amazing job with the character. I love how she's able to be confident and strong, but also um, soft as well and vulnerable at the same time. So she shows a lot of that in this episode when she's talking to Viserys, when she is in the court as well. It's it's just amazing the range that these actors have. Oh, and. I mean, Matt, I don't know. Like, I, I've been liking uh, Damon a lot more. What did you think of Damon in this episode? I mean, I've, I've never had a, a problem with Matt Smith's portrayal at all. I just yeah. think that they... I don't think they're doing a great job with his aging process, and I, I never felt oh. like, writing-wise, that they did a whole lot to inform us of why he was interested in Rhaenyra to begin with. You know, if it was just to make his brother mad, that seems like a really weird way to go about it, you know? So, yeah. I uh, think that there was an aspect of that, Matt, but I don't think that's the whole thing with his character. I think he did actually have feelings for R Rhaenyra, and I think that there yeah. is a connection and a real bond there because, like, he has tempered himself and changed a lot with his character, and he's for the better, I believe, at least from what we see. I get you know? it's hard to root for a pedophile, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know. True. This this uh, show makes you root for interesting folks, right? This is Game of Thrones, <laughs> though. Yeah. Um, but I very much enjoy the character now. Uh, Matt Smith is killing it as, you know, as this character. I, I, I love Matt Smith. I think he's awesome. I always liked him in Doctor Who. We've talked about this before. Um, but I very much enjoyed his performance, especially in this one. You know, when he was sitting there and he was talking to Vayman Valerian, when, you know, Vayman was on, in yeah. in the hall there, and he's like, say it. Uh -huh. Say it. He's <laughs> I just love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. He's waiting he for was you. just, I, I, We should go it. back through and get, like, a body count. You know, how many episodes, <laughs> are there more episodes where, Damon kills somebody either in front of us or it's implied or are there right. less episodes or are there more episodes mm -hmm. where he doesn't kill anybody I, I think yeah. I think he's got the majority of kills yeah <laughs> and so and yeah in this episode we also see a bunch of the kids have grown up they're new actors as well so we have a whole new cast pretty much and like you were saying Matt like there's some characters in here that are the same actors some characters that don't appear to age like also, like Sir Kristen, Sir he doesn't Christ. appear to age as well. Um, yeah, for me though, Matt, and that's a that's a that's a reasonable critique of the show. But I I've just come to you know we we've seen this throughout the season so far with these time jumps. There's certain people that haven't aged, and there's certain people that they do age. Um, and so for me, it's more about character and the performances that are are being presented to us rather than the aging process of these characters. I think that with Patty Constantine having the King Viserys having leprosy in this kind of really contrasts that that uh, those other characters towards him. He is uh, rapidly degrading because of his disease. And so I think if he didn't have that disease, he'd be just as young looking as his brother Damon. Um, so when we see those two together, it's like, oh yeah, why isn't Damon aging like Viserys? But Viserys has a major disease that is destroying his body. So uh, it's it's unfair to compare those two. But at the same time, it's it's a reasonable critique. I understand that, but it, I don't. I'm not bothered by that at all. It's the performances that that bring this thing to a whole nother level, and it doesn't really matter to me that they they don't look like they've aged 20 years or whatnot. And you know, it's it's hard to judge too, right, Matt? Because they all have white hair, and you know, yeah. so it's not like we can show them like me getting gray hair <laughs> now and everything else, and then going to white hair. I mean, they they had white hair from the start, so again, that's a uh, detraction on that so but reasonable critique Matt I, I definitely agree yeah so let's go through some of the actors here uh, I gotta say stand out for me was Eamon Targaryen that Ewan Mitchell already is is a highlight for me oh, like he is this oh, <laughs> such a stellar performance and just being able to show that he's able to defeat Sir Kristen so easily the guy that actually defeated Damon Targaryen the attorney during episode one, right. uh, I thought that was an interesting aspect of the episode, how he is always referring to, 
you know, the strong boys as his nephews and whatever. They're like, have you come to train nephews? I thought that this actor has a very unique presence. And I loved at, at the dinner table when they were toasting and everything. And, you know, you have you have the character of uh, Jasiris. Like, he gets really mad at Aegon. Aegon Targaryen is played by Tom Glenn Carney now. And it's amazing. Each of these actors, each of these characters gets a little moment to show you who they are. And Aegon, once again, is showing that he's a sleaze ball, trying to tell, <laughs> you know trying to rile them up and you know he un did something yeah. unsavory to one of the servants and everything and you see allison deal with that early on in the episode and it's just like yeah once again this is just the most vile of of kids out there and so they're they're laying that on thick with that this this actor is doing a really good job of portraying that too so that was tom glenn carney um once again you and mitchell's playing aemon targaryen oh and uh i loved helena she was awesome in this episode helena targaryen played by uh fia Sa saban and i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing these names i'm terrible with names but uh, these these actors are doing a, a, an incredible job desiris valarian is harry collett lucirus the the second born brother of uh of rhaenyra is uh elliot grehalt and uh Vaymond Valerian for his last performance was uh, head splitting. You know, <laughs> it was played by Will Johnson. He did an incredible job with that performance. But back to Aemon Targaryen. Um, I I loved how like at the end he has that final toast and everything, and how he how he like puts his fist on the table like that, and it's just the, the power like that he has. You you know, with Viserys, uh, not Viserys, but. Uh, with Jaceris and everything, he kind of stomped his hands and gave a little toast and everything. And you see, like, like the brutality of this character of Aemon, just in the amount of force that he, he he's hit, hitting the table. And he has that nice little toast where he compliments them and then mentions that they're strong. So, <laughs> just to antagonize them a little bit. And so, that was really cool to get to see that. I very much enjoyed all the interactions there. Um, but once again, um, seeing all these characters kind of reconcile a little bit too, like you see Allison and you see Rhaenyra actually kind of reconcile and, and remember their friendship from back in the day, which was beautiful to see, but also heartbreaking because we know where this story is going, right, Matt? We're getting to see where it's heading now. So it was heartbreaking and we know what's going to happen as soon as King Viserys dies that, that there's tension there. This isn't going to be an amicable family. This isn't going to be the binding of the Targaryen family that we want to see. Uh, but uh, it's going to light off, and I think we're going to get some amazing, amazing episodes coming up. So for me, I think my overall rating of this episode is probably going to be... Um, I really did like this episode. Once again, like I said, the rewatchability, I've watched it three times. So I'm going to say... It's a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm going to give this a 10. I gave last week's episode a 10 out of 10. I'm going to give this week's episode a 10 out of 10 too. And, you know, with it being brighter, maybe more people like this episode too, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you think, Matt? What was your rating for this episode? All in all, this came as close to a Christmas episode as we're ever going to get with uh, Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. <laughs> I love seeing... Just King Viserys happy with what was going on during the dinner. Mm. To me, it was a yeah, that was hating moment. Yeah, and I was like, again, like you were talking about, um, uh, what was it a week ago or something with Rhaenyra making the correct decision and let her mm -hmm. husband live? I think we got another little moment like that with Game of Thrones where somebody actually got to have an enjoyable moment. Of course, his face yeah. is half eaten off and he's barely alive, mm -hmm. but <laughs> he did get to have yeah. uh, at least one decent dinner with his family while he was still in the room. After he leaves, yeah. everybody goes crazy, but, uh, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's Game of Thrones. Which is foreshadowing for what happens when he dies. It's going to be, that's exactly the same kind of thing. There's going to be tension. Um, after, oh, yeah. after he dies. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I don't know, Matt, for, as a father and, and me as a father here, this is fatherly fandom, guys, if you didn't know, um, <laughs> I felt very emotional 
when um, he comes into the room, into the throne room and everything, and he goes in oh. there to defend his daughter. Because there, uh, whatever you say, there is definitely a special bond between a father and his daughter. Yeah, well, and, and they uh, definitely show that very well and, in this show. And the brothers, you know, getting a chance to have Damon place the crown on his brother's head, help him. Yes. Kind of giving vindication that whatever he's done, I feel like Damon feels that he's that Viserys has done his best. There's sure. there's definitely love there, and and it was such a good payoff for Viserys' character because he has loved his brother this whole entire time. And that's why he never was as harsh on Damon as yeah. as he probably should have been. And to see those two relationships reconcile like that, and I felt as an audience member, not only was Damon putting the crown on his head as a character, but as an audience. We're putting the crown on Patty Constantine's head for this amazing performance, and it's just amazing that and he, we all must bow down to this performance. He is king yeah. in this show, and he, he, um, once again, I can't say enough good things about it. I was emotionally invested in this entire scene. It got me, and for me, like you know, you were taken out of the story a bit with it. I didn't feel that at all, and that's why I did give this a ten out of ten. I think that uh, what will be interesting now is if we're going to just veer a little bit too close to retread of what happened in Game of Thrones, where basically we don't have a clear leader of the realm. You know? Yeah. Um, and we can get more to that. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that has not read the material already. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's it's definitely going to be there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that comes up yeah but um, I, I'm hoping that after all the dust settles from that that it doesn't become like you know what we've already seen so right that's yet to be seen I, I think that mm -hmm. uh, the writers and the director and everybody that's uh, creatively exploring where to take the storyline next is uh, giving us a little bit more room to breathe as an audience in this episode. I really liked that. Um, I, yeah. I like that we didn't get a whole bunch of plot beats all at the same time or in quick succession. So for me, overall, I'm going to give this episode um, a 9 out of 10. I think it's been my favorite nice! so far. Uh, I Whoa! Uh, watched it twice, so like you said, there yeah. was rewatchability. There was great yeah, this throughout, and uh, I'm really impressed with uh, with all that went into creating the series's character, both in his performance and, like you said, uh, the makeup effects, the CGI, yeah. um, as well as the direction. So, good job all yeah. around. Nine out of ten. Hats off to that VFX team. You guys are doing an incredible job. Dragonstone in itself, we got a nice pan over of Dragonstone as well yeah. in the beginning of this episode that looked gorgeous so absolutely yeah all, all the red effects of the the creatures you know the draft just yeah as detailed it was also as something yeah so it, yeah and it was also really cool to get to see how uh the dragons actually kind of lay their eggs in those little, little sacks in the caves as well so we got oh yeah yeah that was digging them up that was really cool. So one last thing before we depart. these. Uh, so it's a 9 out of 10 for Matt and a 10 out of 10 for me. So high praise for this episode. Definitely worth watching for you guys out there. But I want to ask you a question, Matt. Are you team black or are you team green? Um, what is your no, I answer? I think that Allison... Yeah, I think that Allison has been well-intentioned the entire time and that she is definitely um a person that has had bad things happen to her uh no i i'm team green I, i'm whoa team yeah, green I'm rooting <laughs> I, I don't like her dad i don't definitely yeah. don't like her, her kids but i don't really Auto like Hightower. anybody else on team black either i mean they're all just mm -hmm. Uh, a whole bunch of people that do whatever they want selfishly and are expecting mm. to reap the benefits of that without repercussions. So, mm. yeah, I, I've kind of like I've been on the fence, off the fence when it comes to Rhaenyra Targaryen, but I think this this episode and like there's definitely things about the character that I absolutely hate. The whole like 
you know, it seems like she has a specific spot near the weirwood tree where she always lies to, like, the person about what she's doing. She did this with Allison <laughs> Hightower about, you know, sleeping with her uncle or sleeping around and everything. She she swore that she didn't right there next to the weirwood tree. And then this episode, she is talking to her Aunt Renice, or I don't think it's her aunt. I think it's, like, uh, it's uh, Sears' cousin. So what would that be? I don't know. Re she was talking to her... Uh, uh, Renice about that. Be her uh, cousin. That she oh. Yeah. So she was talking about how she didn't plot in killing Lenore, and it's just like, come on. It's like, okay, you're you're just gonna be a liar. But everything else about the I very much appreciate. I I appreciated that like she doesn't like she doesn't feel like she wants this burden anymore. She had that beautiful scene with Viserys in his bed, and she's like, if you want me to do this, you know, come and. You know, stand by my side and my children's side and everything. And she understands the weight of this situation. Yeah. And we get that scene too at the end with Allison. She and uh, how Allison misinterprets what Viserys is saying on his deathbed, essentially, like saying, "Oh, oh, Aegon is supposed to take over and everything." This is where the miscommunication is going to come into play in the next few episodes. But yeah, uh, so do you? He assumed he was talking to Rhaenyra and just kind of had like a dementia moment. Absolutely. And Allison is he, yeah. he was talking to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so he probably thought he was talking to Rhaenyra at that moment. And so Allison definitely thinks that the king has changed his mind about who he wants to succeed him. And she will try to use that as claim. Um, but I, I, again, I very much have come around with Rhaenyra. I think that she has good intentions and she wants what's best for the realm. And she's just trying to do the right thing, even though she has made several bad mistakes and poor decisions in her life. And who hasn't in the show? It's freaking Game of Thrones. Everybody's making poor decisions after poor decisions. Like, I, I loved Sir Kristen Cole at the beginning of the series. Now I absolutely hate this character and how, you know, just terrible he's become. So for me, I am Team Black all the way. So we got Chris's Team Black. And, and Matty Parham over here, over down here, is uh, Team Green. So we'll see how this plays out. We'll see who the victor is, brother. So who's going to come out on top? Go Team Black. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that's a, that's a 9 out of 10 for Matt once again and a 10 out of 10 for me. We're glad that you joined us for this show. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. My daughter's going to be shaving my head if we get to uh, 100, 100 subscribers 100 on this channel. Yeah, so uh, make sure you subscribe for that, and we'll have a nice little video from that uh, whenever that does happen. And we will uh, – thanks for, again for joining, and we'll see you again. We have two more episodes of House of the Dragon, so you'll get to look forward to one more next week and another after that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Join us for all of our other material from – and or the uh, finale of She-Hulk is this week, as well as Rings of Power. We're wrapping up a lot of stuff here coming up soon, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Matt, do you have anything else before we leave, depart these lands of Westeros? Yep. About to lose signal, so it's great timing. <laughs> All right, so from our families to yours. Have a good one. Adios.